I'm sure you all know the basics about VPN services at this point, these glorified proxy servers that almost every online influencer under the sun gets paid to shill. Now in theory, VPN services are great for user privacy, at least when they work, because they hide your real IP address and your location when you're connecting to all these online services, which are oftentimes run by big tech companies that make billions of dollars off of tracking your behavior across the web and selling that data to advertisers. But there's a lot of problems with the current state of VPNs in this economy. Most of them are not much different than Google and Facebook and the rest of big tech themselves that created all of these free services that track you and turn you into the product, except on top of tracking and selling your data just like big tech, they're charging you up front to use the VPN service a lot of the time. So they're getting paid on both ends of the transaction. And you know, sometimes the VPN service doesn't even fulfill its fundamental purpose of hiding your IP address and your location from anybody that might be snooping on your online activity. You see, the vast majority of VPN apps and configurations have some kind of leaks. Now, these leaks could be caused by issues with the VPN application itself. It could be because of sloppy coding or purposefully sloppy coding for all kinds of nefarious purposes, or as we're going to see today, it could be flaws outside of the VPN's control inside of the operating system. So I stumbled upon this blog post today that was written by Mulvad, which in my opinion is the most privacy focused VPN provider in existence today. Like if you're really looking for a VPN for critical privacy purposes and not just for changing your location to outside of the US to keep using TikTok, then these guys are for you. But anyway, this blog post here is about DNS leaks that occur outside the VPN tunnel on Android. And let me be clear, this isn't just an issue with Mulvad VPN. It's an Android issue, and so therefore it's gonna be an issue with every other VPN out there, at least in certain circumstances, uh, because it's specifically um, an issue, or at least so far from the investigation, uh, the leak seems to be limited to calls to the get adder info function. Now, this is just one of the APIs on Android that are able to make DNS queries. Another one, the DNS Resolver API, does not appear to have this problem. So, if you're developing apps for Android, you're probably going to want to use this instead of get adder info whenever possible. Now, unfortunately, as Mulvad explains here, the Chrome browser does use the get adder info function. So the most popular browser in the world leaks DNS queries even when you're using a VPN. Who would have guessed that Google's browser, the same browser that spies on you in incognito mode, continues to function like spyware? So because of this, it's pretty safe to say that a good deal of people that are using VPNs on Android are effectively wasting their money because you know your VPN app even if you're using one like Mulvad that tries to be effective, just isn't going to work because of sloppy Android code. Um, now, Mulvad did include some scripts here that you can use to test if your device is vulnerable to DNS leaks. And even though we're talking about problems in Android here, and I've only tested it so far on an Android platform, you could probably use this on any platform that at least supports WireGuard because these are WireGuard configuration files. Um, so yeah, you basically just import those into WireGuard and then you run this spam get request.html, which is just some JavaScript that spams get requests every 30 milliseconds. Um, and then yeah, you're able to do that test and then you can also um, on your router, if you're running OpenWart, 
like me, you can just SSH into it and install the TCP dump package to it in order to monitor device traffic right on your router and then you can observe uh, for DNS leaks like they're showing you here. But if your router doesn't support that, then you could do packet capturing with another device that's running Wireshark. Um, and you could either have the device connected right to your router or you could just capture packets out of the air if we're talking about an Android device or I guess any device that's using Wi-Fi. Um, as long as the device that you're using to do the packet capturing has the right kind of Wi-Fi card. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate to you guys that this leak does in fact exist on Android. Um, so over here on the left-hand side is just my open word admin panel. I just have this open to show you guys the local IPv4 address of my Pixel 6 Pro, the device that I'm gonna be testing this with. And over here on the right-hand side is my terminal where I'm SSH'd into the same open word router. And I've already got the TCP dump command installed onto it. And this is the specific command. So TCP dump, we're monitoring the BRLAN interface. Uh, we're capturing UDP packets specifically. And of course, we're listening for the uh, Pixel 6 Pro specifically. And by the way, this apparently affects all builds of Android. So it really shouldn't matter what Android device you use to uh, test this with. It doesn't have to be a Pixel. Um, and we're also listening for port 53 specifically since it's a DNS leak that this has. Um, now, on your Android device, you want to download those two WireGuard configuration files in the spam get request.html from Mulvad. I'll have a link to their blog in the description below where you can download all that stuff. And then in the WireGuard app, which you also have to install onto your phone. And this is just the standard WireGuard application. So like anything that's using WireGuard should be affected by this as well. Um, so maybe you technically don't have to use WireGuard, but this is just to demonstrate that like it affects any VPN that's using this kind of configuration. Um, toggle on the WG1 and then in the settings, we're going to toggle the always on VPN setting and block connections without VPN. And as it tells us right here, when this setting is on, you won't have an internet connection until the VPN successfully connects. So this is supposed to be essentially a VPN kill switch. Um, so we've got that set. Now we'll start our packet capturing and so if everything's working correctly, um, which we know it's not, but you'll see that it's not soon, nothing should show up here that's not connecting uh, to Mulvat. And um, now we'll open up spam get request.html with Chrome. And they, um, they tell you to do the split screen thing, but this script should be able to just run in the background uh, with Chrome. So you don't necessarily have to do this if you don't want, but I will, cause it'll look good on video. So start that script. And then we should be able to just switch between these different configurations or, you know, just turn them on or off. And then you'll start seeing the request popping up. Here, I'll actually make this bigger. And let's see if we get any leaks so far. It might take a little while to uh, notice some. Uh, let's see. All right, so here's one. So yeah, everything, um, you know, where it's connecting to Mulvad test is is what it's supposed to be doing. But here, we just got a request to beacons.gv2.com, which I'm pretty sure is Google. We'll just verify that real quick. 
Because, you know, this is kind of who we're trying to avoid connecting to, right? Um, let's see, yeah, so this is Google. So yeah, it's, um, <laughs> the VPN is not working as expected. And again, we've got always on VPN and block connections without the VPN. So this should not be happening. Now, uh, let's talk about some ways to defend against this because like I mentioned earlier, the issue appears to be narrowed down to the get adder info function. So if whatever apps you're using on your phone don't use that function, then you should be good. But the better solution here uh, would be a VPN kill switch, which could be either software running on the device or a dedicated firewall that's running on your router, or it could be a device between your phone and the router that might be um, even better. You could even do a uh, like layer two, you know, transparent firewall, and that's going to uh, also make sure that there's no hop between it and, and make sure that no app, basically no applications are really gonna be able to see that the firewall is there. Now, when we're talking about VPN kill switches, like I said, this block connections uh, without the VPN is supposed to be a VPN kill switch, but as you saw, it doesn't work all the time. So really my advice until Android is patched is to just not use it for anything that's sensitive. Like if your threat model requires a constant VPN connection and no DNS leaks, no leaks of any kind, then you just shouldn't be using Android anymore unless you can put a trusty firewall between your Android device and your router. But that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, base.win, where you can get stylus merch like the Little Damon hoodie, the Come and Find a t-shirt, or the tie-dye tour tee, as well as accessories for your phone and laptop, and save 10% automatically at checkout by paying in Monero XMR. Have a great rest of your day.